In some ways, it's like walking into the unknown, and, I, and there aren't, to my, I know there are a lot of photo archives working towards this point, trying, you know, trying to get all their collections online, but we're right at the forefront of this, and I'm very excited to see what will happen when it's published online. You know, will people be able to do the types of research that, that we had to help them with before? Will they be able to do that entirely on their own? Or will we, will, will we still have a role as a facilitator or will it just take, you know, take off and have a life of its own? The history of the photo archive is quite interesting. It was founded in 1964 under the, the Paul Mellon Centre's predecessor institution, the Paul Mellon Foundation. The aim of the foundation was to improve and further uh, a knowledge and understanding of British art. And when it started, it had two key aims, really. It, it established a, a publications programme, but the other key activity was to set up a photo archive. And it looked to kind of like institutions for inspiration. So the Witt Library at the Courtauld Institute, uh, the National Portrait Gallery have a few huge photo archive, but it didn't want to duplicate those resources. So the initial intention was that they would focus on creating images of hard to document uh, works of art. So with that in mind, they, they employed a photographer and the photographer went and kind of really photographed in three environments. So first of all, um, works of art passing through cell rooms. Secondly, temporary exhibitions. And thirdly, private collections, particularly private collections where it was difficult to get access. After about 10 years, so in about 1974, they did a review of the, the photo archive and they realized that they had established an idiosyncratic resource. So when you went to a box for a particular artist, you didn't find the canon of work, you found the odd things, the things that were less known about. And so at that point they decided that they were going to try and take a more comprehensive approach and try and compile a more kind of canonical uh, resource. And they started collecting images of works of art in public collections, but also collecting images from the, the grand photographic surveys that were going on at the time. Taking that approach to suddenly there was an explosion of what they were taking into the photo archive. It's a collection of over 100,000 images depicting works of art by British artists deliberately and carefully collected together from a variety of sources over about a 50 year period with the sole aim, and I think this is important, the sole aim um, of, of uh, creating a superlative visual resource for the study of British art. When we held our workshop a few years ago, one of the words that people used continuously to describe the photo archive was inspirational and people were getting value from it that I hadn't seen before so the artists working on it and things like that. It's not about glossy current images, that's not the photo archive's job. The photo archive's job is, to, is recording those images at a particular point in time.